I don't have any official agenda, but this anatomy of personalization is my agenda. So I'm going to talk a bit about the hypothesis as well as then these four W's, so who, when, where, what, and then also a bit about results. Uh, if we start like how you should create your personalization, you should start from setting up the goals. Um, I have here a few examples. So first, like for example, you can think of how to reduce the bounce rate. Who would be your target audience? What should you do? When and where? Or then you can take, for example, um, improve marketing campaign return on investment as your goal. And then think of oh, what should I do under this goal in order to uh, improve the improve uh, the metric that I have chosen to measure under that goal. Uh, from there, you can go to hypothesis. So you have the kind of like the bottom line figured out already because you have defined your goals, and then obviously the goal has the metric attached to it. From there you go and define what you should do and for who to improve or increase that metric. Uh, I'll talk a bit about the who and what part because I've noticed that these are uh, the key things that you should really be focusing on. I am talking a bit about like what's the like Rosmo-centric way of thinking here. A uh, few features that we have in the tool that maybe are not that used and then uh, some issues that I have encountered when I have been talking with uh, many of our customers as well as then when I've been just browsing websites and notice that okay these things might not be going as they should. Uh, first of all about the segmentation, I'm not sure if all of you have noticed that in the segmentation we have this thing called mutually exclusive group. Uh, what you can do there is not just to group your segments so that you have many segments and people belonging to all of those if they have completed the actions that segmentation require. Instead, you can actually create journeys. So what you would do is to create, for example, in my picture I have this uh, journey here where I have new visitors, then users who have visited some product page within uh, one week then, okay, who have added something to cart and who have actually purchased. So I can move people from segment to another rather than just keeping them in one or just showing them something that is based on, for example, someone has visited a product page and then I keep on showing that content to them over and over again. So I want to move the visitors uh, forward on their journey. Uh, then if we take an example of, well, relevancy. So what can you do with the segmentation and what kind of content you can show? So this case, I guess it starts to become very uh, common for everyone. So making the front page or the landing page relevant. Um, here I have, well, that kind of visitor that I have identified the their previous interest and then I'll show them relevant content. But the issue here is that there should be some kind of frequency set up, also some kind of priority and so on for this because um, it starts to become a bit annoying if you keep on showing the same content over and over and over again just because the visitor belongs to some segment. It's like reading the uh, main headlines of the newspaper from the same day over and over and over again. You have already seen the content, you shouldn't show it again. So you should always think for each and every segment and each and every personalization case that you do, that there is something, okay, now, if the visitor has seen the content, they either interact with it or they don't. If they interact, what should happen then? If they don't interact, what should happen then? It shouldn't be the repetitive thing that, okay, I, I keep my visitors in the segment of interested in the lenses for two weeks, and I keep on showing this content to them and over, over and over again. This is something I still see quite often with many sites. The other thing here, making the content relevant, is um, about the priorities. So you might have a lot of different contents that you want to show to the same visitor. There can be like this kind of lower, lower level content that is very generic and is maybe just you have a segment like 
is a desktop visitor or is a mobile visitor. And then you have other levels on top of it. So higher priority, you want to show something that is even more targeted to this user. So you don't want to have those two on the same level, but actually prioritize and make some content more important than the other. And then you have a nice like personalization, how do you call it, like matrix or something defined. Uh, then from relevancy, I want to go to the contextual targeting. I think this is something we do way too little. So there are a lot of things that you can utilize without knowing anything of the visitor's history. So take into account, for example, their current location. It doesn't require anything from the history of the visitor. It's the current moment or the time of the day. The uh, well, weather could be something, the location or uh, time of the uh, time of the week or which date it is and which page the visitor is currently. What have they done? In this example case, there is that okay, visitors added something to cart, and then we want to show something to them. Uh, another example case is about this location, and I think it Kate, like has two good points in it. So if we take um, an airline example, and they have flights from different cities. This is now Finnish example, but they fly from other cities than just Helsinki. If we recognize that the visitor is from, let's say, Turku, and we even would know their direct coordinates where they are, we wouldn't say perhaps that, hey, person from Turku, we have flights going from Turku, but you can be also gentle and say like, hey, we have flights from Turku, Tampere, Oulu, and Vasa and then it doesn't start to become creepy to the visitor. But we are guiding them to the correct direction. So in this example, I use the location, so it's the contextual thing. And then on uh, on top of that, I was thinking like, what's the messaging for them without being creepy? Then few best practices, how to go forward. Um, first thing is that, uh, we were talking a bit about the templates earlier. I don't know if uh, everyone online also heard that I was asking this. That I think the templates become relevant when you uh, want to show the same spot, a lot of different contents. And if we think of like how should you apply personalization, you can take your whole site and think of different places, like kind of like draw a map of your site. Where can I show personalized content? What are the spots? And then quite quickly, you might realize that, okay, it's always the, like the same spots where I could show the content. And then you can create a template for that. Maybe you have a few different layouts on that spot, but then uh, the templates become very handy. The other thing uh, I've noticed is that sometimes we don't show personalization and dominance, like the spot that is dominant enough. So if you visit retailer sites, most often the, for example, last viewed products are at the very bottom of the homepage. So you would need to scroll all the way down to find the products that might be very relevant to you. So perhaps uh, you can use this true display rate. So the content has actually been on the viewport to check whether the personalization, like the spot is even relevant because if like, one out of 10 visitors who get the targeted content see it, it doesn't make any sense. And then it might be that the CTR for that true display content or for the visitors who have actually scrolled all the way down can be very high. So what if you actually lift it up a bit? Then you might have um, a lot more uh, benefits out of personalization. Then uh, use this scheduling frequency and priorities, all of those uh, settings are available in the modification view. And then there are two things we, like when we talk about segmentation and showing relevant content, we all, always talk about this kind of rule-based personalization. But then there are also the, for example, product recommendations where there is machine deciding based on what you have done or based on the similar behavior, uh, similar visitors that what you could show to them. So you should combine both of these. And then the last thing is this validate all the cases by testing them. So don't just do personalization just for the sake of it, but test 
does it actually make sense? And it uh, was my hypothesis correct? So uh, I have these examples of like, okay, let's test these 10 banners, which one is the best? And it's not really like a good case. I believe that for these people, this kind of content is good, yes or no? And then you get the result. That's already better when you have some kind of assumption on the background of what do you want to achieve. 